This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. First at 11, we are watching the sky and the radar as showers and storms move out of the area. Good evening to you here at 11 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. We're going to get a right to Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory tracking that storm. Kevin. And that's good news if you want a good night's sleep. We don't need to worry about severe storms. Maybe another 15 minutes in the strong storms in southeast Indiana will move out of the area. If you had a downpour tonight, you're a little more likely to see some patchy fog by morning. Temperatures will be in the 60s. Some very very strong storms rolled across Bloomington, areas of southern Brown County, and then down through Jackson County and North Vernon. There they go. They'll slide southeast of Versailles and make their move toward Cincinnati. We'll come back to the north. These have been non-severe, producing some brief heavy rain and then pushing into the Buckeye State. And just to confirm, nothing redeveloping back to the west. That's why we'll be dry overnight. Temperature 71 in Muncie, otherwise in the 60s. This is where we'll start tomorrow. I think you'll like that. Sunshine on the way. We'll talk about a whole new pattern setting up for the week ahead coming up. We'll see you soon, Kevin. Thank you. A warning tonight from the northeast side. Tire thieves are making the rounds in Indianapolis. Only RTV6's Graham Hunter is talking to one of the victims and finding out how you can protect yourself and your vehicle. It could happen to anyone. Stole a tire cover off of it. Someone damaged Brian Reinhardt's spare tire trying to steal it this weekend. It has a locking ring on it and they tried to busted it has and broke the lock and just popped the cover off took it for whatever reason well, what happened to his sister it's this odd situation and a potentially dangerous one someone stole a tire off her 2016 honda accord they took one of the mag wheels off and replaced it with a donut she got in her car to go to work and it was kind of shaking a little bit they put a spare tire on she wasn't available for an interview but told me on the phone she was just glad something worse didn't happen if they didn't tighten it up luckily they did yeah. Could have fell off. A spokesman from the National Crime Insurance Bureau says preventing tire theft altogether is pretty much impossible, but says one of the best things that you can do is keep your car out of sight and always park in a garage if possible. No, it just had factory lugs on there. The spokesman we talked to says locking lug nuts can help keep your tires safe and recommends using a security system that will alert your phone so you know if someone's messing with your car because missing tires aren't cheap. About $270, $275. She's got to wait a week to get for it to come in. She had to order it. Brian and his sister are left scratching their heads after this most unusual crime. For them to take the time to jack it up and put another tire on, usually they just drop it on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Reporting from the Near East Side, Graham Hunter, RTV6. The National Insurance Crime Bureau wants you to remember that anytime you park on the street, you are a target for crime. They say you should always lock your car doors and leave nothing in plain sight. If you have concerns and want to raise awareness about crimes in your neighborhood, contact us at working for you at rtv6.com. It is an issue RTV6 has covered for years, the urgent need for foster parents across Indiana. And tonight, people learned what it takes to foster a child. The Village's Foster Care Agency hosted an information session for prospective parents. The agency also helps people take the next steps in this process. We offer 20 hours of pre-service training here. Um, they'll do that, and then they'll complete a home study um, where one of our workers goes out to their home and asks them some questions and gets to know them as a family. Um, and their vision for becoming foster adoptive parents. And the Villages hosts information nights once a month. You can also learn more at villageskids.org. Parents and child advocates say Indiana needs to change the law to better protect children from bullying. One idea they're considering, fining parents of bullies up to $500. The group of concerned parents and citizens met today in Fishers to talk about changing the law. Parents will be only fined after a student has been suspended in school, suspended out of school, received counseling, and performed community service. We need to have these parents more accountable because if they're not doing their part at home, how do they expect the schools to do their part? The group will now take their ideas to state lawmakers who will draft legislation for the next legislative session. Several other cities and states such as New York, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania are also considering fines against the parents of bullies. The search for a driver who hit and killed a man on I-465 continues at this hour. Police say 21-year-old Hasil Kiala was a passenger in a car that crashed near the Harding Street exit early Sunday morning. 
County. They say he declined a ride from state troopers and instead chose to walk to a restaurant and wait for someone to pick him up. That's when he was hit by a speeding car. Investigators say the vehicle involved likely has front and, dam and damage. It may be a Kia Soul. If you have information, call state police at 317-899-8577. Police are also looking for this man. He's suspected of trying to set at least seven different homes on fire on the south side of Indianapolis. This is surveillance video from over the weekend at one of the crime scenes on Lawrence Avenue. That fire destroyed a car. If you recognize the suspect, call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. New at 11, the issue is not about sexual orientation. That's what the Archdiocese of Indianapolis says in a statement regarding the latest Catholic school controversy. Yesterday, Cathedral High School announced it has fired a teacher for being in a same-sex marriage after the Archbishop told the school it would no longer be recognized as a Catholic school if it kept the teacher employed. The Archdiocese says all personnel inside a Catholic school are ex expected to abide by all church teachings. A cathedral graduate tells RTV6 the firing does not reflect the values he learned at the school. At Cathedral, uh, I was told and taught to have the competency to see and the courage to act in situations where um, there's a lot of things involved and I would have taken it in a different direction. This comes days after Rebuff lost its official status as a Catholic school for refusing to fire a teacher who's married to a man. Last year, Ron Colley suspended counselor Shelley Fitzgerald indefinitely because she's married to a woman. And this year, a second Ron Colley counselor, Lynn Starkey, says she's losing her job because she's also married to a woman. She told me, we're going to make this work. I still love you, just a different package now. After more than two decades of marriage, a husband shares his true self with his wife. In fact, the entire family is stuck together through a journey that can be isolating. New at 11 and only on our TV6, a retired firefighter and transgender woman shares her story of self-discovery. So do we want to eat or do we want to go look around? Look? It has taken decades for Ellie Keese to show her true colors. And just three weeks post-surgery, this 53-year-old is proud to be part of Indy's Pride Festival. I've been hiding for 30 years, so I went into my marriage already knowing what I was. Ellie was Eric up until two years ago. Eric married Christina almost 25 years ago, and they have two adult daughters. Living in the northeast town of Hoagland, a population less than 1,000, Eric was a firefighter and EMS responder for more than 20 years. Ellie says working in a male-dominated field forced her to suppress her true self. Eric was hiding so many things that Eric was a difficult person. I look back at it and I wonder why people even stayed with him. People, including Eric's wife. Both my military career, getting married, were from some of the wrong reasons. I was trying to get into a pure male combat MOS in the Army getting married because I saw all of my buddies already married thinking, well, these are ways that I can overcome this transgender feeling. And, you know, they weren't working. And after years of pretending to be someone else, Eric finally opened up to his daughter, Rebecca. It was scary because basically my dad had started the conversation with, I don't know how to say this and it might end in divorce. So I was immediately going like worst case scenario, was not at all expecting it to be what it was, but it honestly was the best thing that she could have ever told me at the time. 20 year old Rebecca says, although her father's admission came as a surprise, things her dad did while she was growing up started to now make sense. My, my dad would always like make jokes like, oh, I'm the man of the house. The man of the house gets this and that, whatever. And so we now know that was just compensation. Rebecca, her sister Shannon, and their mom all accepted Ellie for who she is and have supported her on this new journey that they are all taking together. Knowing that my kids will be loved and accepted for however they feel whenever they get older and that their grandparent, grandmothers are going to love them for who they are. Christina has always been a support system, a best friend for Ellie, even when she was known as Eric, holding true to their marriage vows made 25 years ago. What did it mean to you the first time your wife called you Ellie? She'll tell you I was crying. When I realized she had it and everything, um, I couldn't have felt more heartwarmed because I knew that um, everything was going to be okay. And for Ellie, with the love of her wife and daughters, 
things are moving in what she feels is the right direction. My coming out was the best thing for everybody. Ellie is a person that people love to hang out with. My family's been with me. Those three right behind you have been with me through this whole journey from now two years ago. And that's, you know, that's been a big difference. It is how I've been able to heal. Ellie and Christina Keese are one of only 5% of marriages that stay together when one partner transitions. And in May, we shared with you the story of Ryan Ollier. A young man from Newburgh shared his lifelong search to discover his true identity. Both Ryan and Ellie had their gender affirmation surgeries done at University Health with Dr. Sive Gallagher. You can revisit those stories and learn more about the gender affirmation program on our website, theindychannel.com. Coming up here, newly released evidence shows the moments after actor Jesse Smollett reported a hate crime that police say did not happen. And if you've ever dreamed of pitching your business idea on Shark Tank, that dream could become a reality. The show is making a stop in Indianapolis. We'll tell you when and where. You're watching RTV6 News at 11. Only at NewportAquarium.com. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Newly released video shows the moment Chicago police officers responded to actor Jesse Smollett's report of an assault. Smollett is seen still wearing the noose he claims attackers put around his neck. Do you want to take it off for anything? Yeah, I do. I just want to Police released around 69 hours of surveillance and other images in response to media requests. The video shows Smollett on the night of the alleged racist and homophobic attack in January, but the reported assault itself is not on camera. Investigators eventually concluded Smollett orchestrated that attack. He was charged with 16 felonies. The prosecutor later dropped those charges. Just last week, an Illinois judge appointed a special prosecutor to review the case. Smollett has always maintained his innocence. There are growing concerns about conditions at detention centers along the U.S.-Mexico border, and some of those facilities are being described as worse than jail. Pediatrician Dolly Severe was granted access to the Ursula Detention Facility in McAllen, Texas. She says she witnessed a lack of basic sanitation, including babies drinking from unwashed bottles for days and bright fluorescent lights on 24 hours a day. The conditions at these facilities are placing them at increased risk for infection, disease, and death. The U.S. government has removed most of the children from a different border patrol station in Texas after reports that more than 300 kids were detained there and caring for each other with inadequate food, water, and sanitation. Central Indiana is home to countless refugees who fled their home countries to escape poverty, war, and in some cases, the mass murder of their people. Forgiveness to me has become the most uh, 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 rewarding thing I've ever done because I forgive those who killed my parents. Kazito Kalima is one of those refugees who survived genocide. He escaped Rwanda when he was just 14 years old after his parents and other family members were murdered. Now he's making it his mission to support people like him. Kalima founded the Peace Center for Forgiveness and Reconciliation on the north side of Indianapolis. The center connects people with jobs, housing, and helps them navigate the system. It also provides them with a sense of community. We're all like from Africa, so we kind of know what we, it's, what's happening there and what we've been through. We all know that stuff, and it like bringing us together. Um, it like makes us think of home. That student, Ajulu Tata, came to the U.S. at 12 years old. She did not speak any English. Now she's preparing to go to college on a basketball scholarship. You can learn more about the Peace Center by going to the RTV6 app and clicking on this story. Only RTV6 is working to connect you to jobs, resources, training, and education. The medical device industry is expanding and hiring Hoosiers. PTS Diagnostics makes devices that helps people manage diabetes and heart disease. The company just built a new facility in Whitestown. Now it's looking for employees in a variety of departments. Because we do uh, so many different things here, we have a number of different positions open at a given time. Uh, typically we have a high demand for people with engineering backgrounds, uh, software, code writers if you will, um, chemistry majors, um, and then moving into the commercial side, you know, we need uh, marketing people and sales people, finance and accounting people, uh, clerical support. We have 
many, many hourly positions and, and assembly line positions. If you are interested in applying for a job at PTS Diagnostics, go to HiringHoosiers.com and click on this story. Shark Tank is coming to Indianapolis. If you have a brilliant business idea and need help getting it off the ground, the ABC show will hold an open call on July 16th at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This will be the first time Shark Tank visits Indiana. Attendees are encouraged to fill out an online application and bring it to the open call. For more info, go to the RTV6 app and click on this story. And that guy had an amazing idea. It was a sweatshirt that turned to a backpack. <laughs> just so you didn't have to like I, carry it around. I love that show. Yeah. So it'd be awesome to see some Indianapolis some folks talent here, in some, there. I've got some ideas for a new rain gauge. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering if you had a weather invention ready to go. <laughs> I wish we could invent a way to control the weather. Then we'd be in good shape. All right, great. you want to see teamwork? Watch this. This is Victory Field, and there the uh, tarp comes out to cover the uh, infield. The heavy rain rolled through, and then voila, it's time to take that back up and move on at Victory Field. It's the beginning of their homestand through the week. Let's talk about the latest contribution. It's pushed us closer to moving into the top 10 list for wettest Junes on record, 7.51. We needed to make to 7.65 to enter the top 10. There's still a chance, but our rain chances are going down for the rest of the week and our temperatures are coming up. That's a pretty decent combination if you like summer weather. Tomorrow we're dry. That chance for a thunderstorm is there Wednesday, especially in the afternoon, and then very low chances for rain as we go Thursday through Sunday, and temperatures will be pushing 90. We're 0 for 2019. We haven't had a single day where temperatures have hit 90 this summer or this year. We'll be close as we get to Thursday right on through Sunday. Temperatures generally in the upper 80s and the humidity will be very noticeable as we go into the weekend. We'll get the full impact of summer weather. Strong storms developed and moved quickly through the southern portions of Brown County, right near Bloomington, Lake Monroe, then into Brown County, Story, Indiana, just south of Nashville, and most recently through uh, Jackson County and Seymour. All of this pushing to the east and out of the state. There are a few straggling showers, nothing strong, anywhere from uh, Connorsville to Liberty and then around Winchester. There's a closer view of those intense storms as they push to the east. It's pretty decent as far as the temperature is concerned. 60 in Lafayette. We're all pretty consistently in the 60s. If the wind stays calm enough, I do think we'll have some patchy fog in the morning. It's most likely north and west of Indianapolis, but if you had rain this evening, it makes a little bit better chance you'll have some morning fog. Sunshine for all of us tomorrow. Temperature climbs into the low 80s, a nice breeze. I show you this, not to pinpoint any timing for showers and thunderstorms, just to show you there aren't any scheduled for tomorrow. Temperatures to the north, lower 80s. You'll get your chance to get into the upper 80s. Temperatures south, mid 80s and about 83 in the metro area. Wednesday, chance for thunderstorms increases a bit in the afternoon and never becomes overwhelming. 7 a.m., not much happening. Wednesday afternoon into the evening, you begin to see some showers and thunderstorms develop almost to the 90 degree mark to the south on Wednesday, upper 80s just about everywhere. Friday, nice dismount from the work week with temperature at 89. As you look at the weekend forecast, humidity comes up. That will drive our feels like temperatures or the heat index into the low to mid 90s as temperatures continue to sit in the upper 80s. We've had some comfortable overnights recently, but pretty consistently around 70 for overnight lows coming up, which means you probably won't have the windows open letting in fresh air. No. no. A little Not AC so much. maybe. Somebody might be into that. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Humid so nights. Uh, you had a shot of the tarp on the field at right Victory up. Field. They had some issues with that earlier. Oh. I'll show you what that's all about with the Indians highlights coming up. Plus, football season will be here before you know it. Getting an early jump on it with a former star from Ward Central High School back home. Paying it forward. That's next. I'll find checking account and get $300. The NBA Awards tonight, Larry Bird getting the league's Lifetime Achievement Award right alongside Magic Johnson. Of course, their epic pro careers running side by side from the very beginning, dominated the 1980s, and gold medal teammates on the Olympic Dream Team in 1992, both in the Hall of Fame as well. Cool stuff. Well, good evening, everyone. Sheldon Day was an All-State player and a state champion at Warren Central High School. Went to Notre Dame after that and now is with the San Francisco 49ers. But he brought it all back home this past weekend, sharing his love of football and some life lessons as well. 
Here's a closer look in our Monday Sports Extra Spotlight. Y'all coach is going to be right in front of y'all. Y'all going to stand up, and then we're going to get into the drills, all right? Sheldon Days feeling right. like a kid again. All right. And it seems about right back on the field where his football career really got started. Yeah, so I was cut from the uh, sixth grade Little Warrior team, uh, last day of cuts, and it, uh, it put a, a fire in my heart to know that nothing is nothing will ever be taken away from me again. The Warren Central High School grad came back home to host his third annual summer camp. More than 180 boys and girls getting instruction from the big man himself. We're going to squat down. Squat, squat. And we're going to reach, reach for the stars. Reach for the stars. There it is. My slogan is uh, grind in the dark so you can shine in the light. So uh, whether that's the library, whether that's athletics, I'll put all that work in uh, behind the scenes so that when the time or the stage presents itself that you can shine. It is just so gratifying to see the love he has for the children, the community, wanting to show the kids that you can achieve anything you want to do if you just try. You know, just stay, stay focused and grounded. Part of the weekend also included a trip to Notre Dame. The kids got a tour of the stadium, a talk from coach Brian Kelly, and a glimpse at how Sheldon's hard work here paid off here. I think on a bus ride up, it's like, ah, it's Notre Dame, it's Notre Dame. But once you see the campus, you see the Golden Dome, you see Touchdown Jesus, you get to walk in the stadium, it just changes the kids' lives. They're intrigued about the opportunity to go to college. They, they're inspiring themselves and setting goals. They're learning about a lot more than just football. These lessons on the field helping grow these young people in a bigger way. Make sure that we're together as a community because we know that so much negative uh, energy out here that we try to, try to create some positive energy in these kids' lives. He's still my baby in my heart, but to see him as a man that is just trying to motivate the young children, boys and girls, and just spread what, you know, he has with them. Just a great program out there the entire weekend, free for those kids. Sheldon picked up the tab, hoping to maybe add a session for high school kids in the future with some NFL players to be instructors. The 49ers will report to training camp on July 26th. Victory Field tonight. The weather came through in a hurry. Kevin told us about Watch the Grounds crew. One of the tarp, well, one of the tarp girls, she got caught on the tarp. Had to ride it out. <laughs> Wet, yes. Okay as well. They had about a 45-minute rain delay. Before the rain delay, Indy got a couple ones on the board. Bottom of the second inning, Stephen Barron with this long one to left field. Two-run shot, 2-0. Two that was more than enough tonight because Mitch Keller was great. Pitched into the eighth inning. Six strikeouts, one run, six hits. Indians win 3-1. They're home against Louisville again. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Well, the Fever finally made it home this evening, 22 hours after leaving Seattle. They have a home game against Minnesota tomorrow night at 7. Have to rest up. We'll be there live on the news at 6, see how they're feeling. And we'll be back to finish off tonight's news at 11 after one more break. Train warranty and 4,000 cash back. Off to the east, the thunderstorms coming to an end, sliding out of the state, which means it'll be quiet overnight. 63, first thing in the morning by lunchtime, upper 70s, sunshine, the big noticeable change throughout the day. That breeze will be nice out of the west, 83, the high temperature, and that's a start. Temperatures from there warm into the upper 80s. We may have a ribbon cutting later this week. Right. If we hit 90, Welcome summer. then I'll get the giant scissors out. If you've got a ribbon, I don't it's have a ribbon. Confetti and balloon, well, we'll right. do a whole thing for it. Good night. Good night.